Welcome back to Fiddle Up. My name is Emerald Ray, and today we are going to be working on The Sailor's Wife. This is a really beautiful Scottish jig that I love and play all the time. I love this tune. And uh, it's got some really beautiful little twists and turns. And we're going to be adding some trills and some warbles in there. And so let's get started. Let's start off on your open D string. just adding a little trill in there and again you don't have to do any any of this ornamentation this is just me telling you what I do so that's open D E and F natural here if we were gonna play a scale for this tune we would play And that's sometimes called a Dorian tune, but in Celtic music, that's just kind of a normal minor scale. So that's D, E, F sharp, G, open A, B, C natural, and then D. So the first phrase, up to the second finger doing a second finger trill there and if you want to see uh, a video on trills there's one in the the ornamentation section and then we're gonna hop up to the hop the top octave D here that's your third finger on the A string That's D, open E, F, and F natural. So that's a low one for anybody who's wondering. So that's the first first bar there. Now that we've kind of used to used to where we're going here. That's two bars. I meant the first phrase. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excellent. And now we're going to hit that top A, third finger on your E, e string. And we're just coming down that scale that we were talking about before from the A. It's a nice A, G, F, open E, and then down to the A string, D and C. And 
then the next phrase. So that's A, B, C, open A, and then a nice uh, C arpeggio starting from the G on your D string, and then E, and then C on the bottom. That's third finger on your G string down there. So that second phrase is a lot. Let me play it for you so you can see what it sounds like. So we just covered the whole fiddle there. <laughs> it's not nothing. So let's start from the top A again. So now, first phrase and second phrase together sound like this. So just to talk about some of the ornamentation that I'm doing in there, I'm doing that trill on my F right in the beginning. And I'm doing a nice slur up there too. Or in my head, instead of slurs, I'm thinking down, up, down, up, down, up, down. this this F up on the top string here up on my E string this nice low one here I'm gonna add a warble and a warbles that you can see a video on that in the ornamentation section as well that's where you just lift your finger up really quickly And then coming down from the top. So that was a tricky little trail in there. With my third finger on the A string. So that's a little, a, a little D to C, very quick. So all together so far we have and then continuing on the third phrase is exactly like the first and I like to slur out of this right into the D and now we've come to the last phrase in the A part. So we've got a little sneaky C sharp in there and if you're writing this out with tradition with like you know regular notation it would be a sneaky C sharp accidental um, but in fiddle music we don't really talk about accidentals accidents happen all the time <laughs> accidentals um, in Celtic music especially in Scottish music the mode shifts a lot like from minor to major and and sevenths can s slip up and down and that's pretty normal. We don't even think about that as being anything special. <laughs> so <laughs> accidentals happen. Um, so that's just a, you know, it's just a sneaky C sharp in there.
So last phrase. And so I'm doing a nice big open droney double stop there with my open D. in a little warble at the top there. I just lifted up my third finger. And it just gives this kind of drony bagpipey flavor to it. So coming from the third phrase, remember we were down on that C and we slurred into the D? from the top of the A part. So there's, besides the bowings I mentioned, there's not really anything special to mention about the bowing. I would just keep an eye on it, but you can change things. You can change what I'm doing. I'm keeping it pretty basic. And in Scottish music, you do keep the bowing pretty basic and you kind of go crazy with accents and things like that. Um, but for this one, I'll keep it pretty standard. And if you feel like adding in something more fancy, feel free. So I'm gonna get into this tune by doing a really cool pickup, which is I'm gonna start off on my first finger on my G string, the A down there. And this gives me a nice D chord, an A and a D together make an open D sound. So, and I mean open as the chord, meaning it doesn't have a third, so it's just a root and fifth. So that's a nice way to start to start the tune. So let's start like that. Just go uh, take a big down bow from the A to the D, and then give it a little double stop in the middle there. And then we'll see if we can get to the end of the A part like that. That sounds wonderful. So with all of that ornamentation, also learn my way, but then immediately throw it out and find your own way. There's tons of different things that you can do in there with all of those things. It's good to learn what somebody else does, but then it's also good to throw out the book and be fluid with it. So even if you're just getting started out, if you are starting this course and you're just getting into intermediate stuff, I would uh, have a look at the ornamentation section and see what your your, there's a whole buffet of ornamentation tricks in there. So have a look around and see what the options are and then start making this music your own pretty much immediately. I would say just do, be creative with it. That is what everybody is supposed to do. So <clears throat> on to part B, let's do the B part. And I'll play, play you that so you can hear what it sounds like.
really easy. We're going to start on uh, an F sharp on the top, F sharp G A. trill at the top there. So that that's all for that. The next phrase has a really cool C double stop in there that I want to play around with. at the top, but let's talk about that C double stop there. So that's a really cool place to do a, D, do a double stop. It's a little bit less common than doing open strings. So to do that double stop, just put your finger right in between the two strings. So that's your A string and your E string, and you're doing a low two. So what I'm going to do is wiggle my finger back and forth based on what string I'm on, but basically stay in the middle. That's the whole trick with double stops is to keep your finger in the middle of the string. And if you have little finger pads like I do, it might be a little bit more difficult for you and you might have to waggle around a little bit more. If you have large finger pads, this is going to be easy. <laughs> so it all depends on the size of the tip of your finger. So open E, down to the C, low two on the A, and then up to the double stop together. Now you can do this without the double stop, but honestly it's kind of easier to do it with it. I find that I'm kind of, it's actually more work to do it without the double stop. There are times when double stops make things just easier. Like it's easy to kind of sh <laughs> like sort of snow plow through the strings rather than individually play the strings. And this is one of those moments. So give it a try and see what you think. So that's open E, C, and then uh, C and G together. And then open E again. C. And then C and G together. So try that again. And that bowing, as much as that feels awkward, is just down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> And then the last part of the phrase is so open E to G little trill on your third finger on the A so together that whole second phrase sounds like this and second phrase together sound like this. Okay, so let's try the third phrase, because we're we're so close to the end here, and the 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 second phrase is is the third phrase is very close to the first phrase, but not exactly the same. So 
So that might not seem similar at all, but it actually is, it's a variation on the first phrase. And that's how a lot of these tunes are kind of built. They're built on the concept of variations. So let's try uh, F, G, A, and then a, a trill on the fourth finger on the top. And then open E. So that's E, F, G, trill on the third finger, and then F, G again. Try it again. One more time for good luck. And the last phrase is nice and easy. You already know that one. So let's try the whole B part together. So we'll do a pickup on the open E string like that. Ready? Okay, so let's try the whole thing together. One, two, and here we go.
right, so if you'd like to take this tune up to the next level, if you want to take this tune up to advanced level, then I would say adding more ornamentation is always a good thing, but also playing around with the melody a little bit is a good thing to do. <laughs> with the melodies and, and kind of vary things you know you can create some variations and you know after you played the tune one way one time um, you know this tune is a Scottish tune so it's gonna stay a little bit more straight but you could kind of dip into Irish music a little bit to to stylize this tune and that's sometimes what I do when I'm playing this in a concert or at a dance or something like that <laughs> double stops of course um, but one of my favorite things that I love to do with this one especially when I'm playing it with people is I love to do a little harmony on the B part that that B part I like to do a little uh, harmony that goes like this slower. So I'm playing around with the tonality a little bit there. That's a straight up, uh, you know, D minor chord there. And that's happening when, uh, you know, the other person who's playing will be playing. I'm playing an A minor chord. And what happens there is you get this really cool um, A minor seventh chord, which sounds kind of funky and jazzy. And catching that um, that C sharp there kind of changes the tonality again. And then so that's <laughs> doing all of it but faster. And then. that's going back to that C natural there. So that's something I like to play around with this one, but just generally playing it faster is always a good thing to do, and this one can go pretty fast. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed this tune and I will see you next time.